All right, so you've just hit publish and made your video public on YouTube, and now you think you're just gonna sit back and watch the views roll in, right? You are wrong. I'm gonna show you how to publicize the right way so you can stop doing it the wrong way. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if we haven't met yet, that would be weird because this is video five in the series of 10, but that's cool. I'm Shelly, it's nice to meet you. I'm here to help you make better YouTube content so you can share what you love with the world, and I am ready to help you publicize your videos the correct way. So a lot of the times when I'm talking to people, they think, oh, I hit publish, and I'm just waiting for views to come in, right? And that's not how it works. So the way YouTube is going to see it, the first 24 hours you know, are the most important, just like Instagram has that first 30 to, you know, 30 minutes to one hour that is the most important for your engagement. When it comes to YouTube, you have 24 hours, maybe not even that, to really hit your stride when it comes to getting views and getting attention and traction from your viewers. So there is a study out there that will show that usually the views that you get within your first 24 hours are about what you'll get at the end of the week. So if you only get 100 views at the end of 24 hours, maybe you're gonna end the week at around 200 views. Does that make sense? All right, so let's go ahead and make sure that you maximize your results so that you can get more views in that first 24 hours. And I know you're feeling like, oh man, I just made this video and I just worked so hard and now I'm just ready for it to be done. No, this is where you have to push a little bit harder. You're so close to the finish line. Let's put the foot on, you know, on the gas and like really take it up a notch. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take you step by step through the process of the things that I do when I publish a video so that I have the best chance of getting the most views. Okay. So to recap, the views that you're going to get in the first 24 hours are usually going to be doubled in what you're going to get in the end of the first week. YouTube is going to give you a little bit of a boost because you are a new video. And so you might find yourself ranking for a little bit in some of those, you know, first few hours and then it's going to drop off after that. So really, really, really important to push the first 24 hours to publicize across all of your platforms. Now it might be a really great idea depending on, you know, your time zone and when you release videos of when you're going to natively upload your items to other platforms because, you know, if you blast everyone at 9 a.m. and then, you know, people aren't coming on until noon or 5 or 8 p.m., it might be a better idea to space out some of those announcements across different platforms based on when you think it's best to post. Or it wouldn't hurt you in some cases, don't spam people, you know, three times a day, but you could totally make two posts, one in the morning, one in the evening, and then you wanna make sure you go onto your Instagram and say, hey guys, I just you know released a new video. I wanna make sure that you go see it. I mean, really get it out there to as many places as possible. I'm gonna take you into the uh, channel analytics that I have for one of my videos, and then I'm just gonna show you a couple things real quick. So one of the things that we're gonna do, we're gonna go into a video. Um, some of this metadata that you have here on the side, YouTube is gonna give you a URL, like a shortened URL for your video, and you can notice it right over here on this side. And and it's important if you want to share the video, you can either use that link or you're gonna see the one later that is in the share button itself, but you can always copy and paste that one as well. If you don't have social media other than YouTube right now, um, I'm gonna have to highly encourage you to do that because it's really, really important for distribution and like getting your name out there right? It, and you want to interact in these communities. And I know it's hard because you have so many of them to keep up with, but it's going to be worth it. Trust me. So the first things first, uh, we're going to go in here. And if you're going into any one of your videos, I'm going to go ahead and click here into one of my videos. And then, so if you go to the page here, right underneath the viewing window, you're going to see the button for share. So YouTube has it super simple in here. All you have to do is you can click on the button, and then you can decide which social media site that you want to take it to. And then what you're going to do is simply just, you know, hit the share button. It's as simple as this. So here I am, I'm going to go ahead and do Pinterest. Pinterest is going to allow you to choose which thumbnail. If you want to choose a different cover, you can do that. It's going to ask you which board to do it on. And you're just going to go ahead and pop. I mean, how fast was that? Right? And then here we go. We got Tumblr and all you have to do here is this one and I'm going to add in a couple of hashtags and I'm going to put that in there and then I'm going to go ahead and post that to Tumblr. Look at that. There you go. Totally fast. All right. So the next one is going to be Twitter. Now when it comes to Twitter and comes to Facebook, I want to show you something right now. Twitter and Facebook are not going to like it very much if you just go in and you go through YouTube and you hit the share button because what it's going to do is it looks like it's a nice pretty picture right now because you worked really hard on this thumbnail. You've crafted it. It looks really good. Now what's going to happen is when you hit that share link and then Twitter and Facebook get a hold of it, they're going to truncate it down into a smaller size, right? So that, you know, people can 
click the play button and they're just gonna give a tiny snippet of it and it just doesn't look that impressive, right? So here's what you wanna do. You don't wanna use the share feature when it comes to Twitter and Facebook and here's why. So you can go to the sites individually and I'm gonna go ahead and go into Twitter and I'm gonna show you what this looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and do one with the sharing feature in YouTube and then I'm going to say what is the what I think is the correct way to share a video on Twitter and Facebook. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in and you're going to upload the actual thumbnail of the video and then maybe something like haven't caught up on this video yet you know catch up on video number four out right now and then you're gonna copy and paste that link right so if you hit that share button there's also gonna be that generated short link as well as if it's on the page of your analytics for your video itself copy that link and then put it in the actual post the native post that you have on Facebook and Twitter so that now here watch this and I'm gonna go ahead and upload my photo and it still has the link to YouTube, right? This is kind of cool because now I can tag people in the photo. So in this case, you know, if I wanted to talk about TubeBuddy and YouTube and myself, I can tag all those people in the photo. Take a look at this side by side, right? Or on top of each other. Which one would you click on? Which one looks more enticing? Which one looks like more appealing? It looks better when you have the entire thumbnail than when you have the truncated version of the thumbnail, right? A lot of the time when there are links that take you off the platform that you're on, Facebook, Twitter, they don't like it as much. So they don't need to push it up and have more people see it in their feeds. So when you have a native post, such as like a photo, they're going to surface that and it's native to the platform. So really, really respect the platform that you're on, you know, and this goes the same for Pinterest if you wanna do it that way as well. You know, a lot of people aren't always looking at a horizontal video on Pinterest. If you have time to make a actual, you know, infographic about maybe the steps that you're doing, if it's a makeup tutorial or something like that, and you pin it, in Pinterest natively as that size, you know, 1080 by 1350 or whatever it is in a tall size, and then you add the link to the video at the bottom, you can drive a lot more organic traffic that way than just doing the quick thing that we did in the beginning with the share button, okay? So I'm gonna show you again what this looks like in Facebook. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and just do the share from here. And the cool thing is, if you're in groups, you can share in groups. If you are on a business page, which I would highly recommend for your channel, I can share it to my business page and then I can share it to my private Facebook group, which is, if you haven't joined it yet, this is just for like-minded individuals who are learning more about using social media to grow their businesses or become kind of um, more of a brand themselves. You can join the Facebook group. The link is in the description. It's called Brand New to brand of business and it's just a very small group of people trying to help each other and share and I'm in there a lot um, and so if you want to have more access to me go to the group and then so I have it I'm gonna share it to my page I'm gonna share it to the group and take a look again what happens when I do a native link with a from the sharing in YouTube versus a dedicated photo post right with the YouTube link in the description how different is that? Like which one would you click on, right? You would totally click on the one that has the entire thumbnail rather than the other ones. So I know this is a few more steps than you're usually used to when it comes to sharing your videos afterwards, but this is the type of stuff, the small details that not everyone else is doing. So if you already are starting at a large pool of people who are creating to stand out, you have to be willing to do some of the things that some of these other people are not going to do. And if you think about it, not everyone is going through and sharing. I mean, even if you did the baseline sharing, not even the native post, that is more than a lot of people are willing to do, right? Then if you take it up a notch and you do native posts on those platforms, it is just one step higher that is going to like set you apart from the other people who are also doing online video. Another great thing too is if you have a native post with a link in it later, if you want to get into like ads or something like that, you can do that on a native post versus just like a link from an external place that's taking them off the platform, right? So that is just an added future proofing tip right there. There are even some sites here that aren't listed that you can still share to, right? So I would share it to Snapchat. I would share it through your Instagram. Now you may not have 10,000 subscribers to do the swipe up feature. You can still get around that because links inside of IGTV posts are still clickable. So what you can do is you can create a short little trailer and then actually just tell people to click on the link right there and it's, it's like a workaround for the swipe up feature. So if you're if you're new to Instagram and you don't have a lot of followers, this is a really great way to do this because the IGTV videos are stored on your channel and they don't disappear after 24 hours like a story does. I'm just gonna run through this really quickly. If you guys want a full in-depth tutorial on how to do this, let me know, drop a comment and we'll walk through it even more. But really just record a little, you know, snippet of yourself saying, hold on, let's let's get it. 
Hey everyone, I am hoping that you are enjoying the How to Find Success in the Eyes of YouTube series. If you haven't yet and you want to download the free ebook, make sure you click up here so that you can go and get your own copy and follow along. It's totally free, it's just for you, and I really hope you enjoy it. This is really just a video tutorial to show you how to get this to click. I hope this helps. Okay, bye. All right, I hope that made sense, right? So you have a post, you say, hey, swipe up here. I've linked the Instagram video. All of a sudden now I've got the Instagram video where I'm saying, hey guys, go check out this video, right? Go swipe up here. You click and open the box. You click on the link. It takes you to the website, right? So it's not perfect and it's definitely more work, but if you don't have the swipe up feature because you're not at 10,000 subscribers on Instagram, this is how you do it. This is how you do that workaround. You can save that story. You can save that IGTV post. You can, you know, share it to other social media sites. I mean, it's really, it's the best you can do until you get to 10,000, right? So I hope that was helpful for you and you now understand how you can still do the swipe up feature even if you don't have 10,000 subscribers. Okay, let's just keep going. So say I don't have 10,000 subscribers, but I just have that ebook, right? That I just have the how to find success in the eyes of YouTube, right? Shameless plug here. If you're already in step five, you probably already have this, but if you don't have it yet, go click on this, check it out, download it, follow along. And what you could do is create a IGTV video that says something like, hey everyone, I just released my ebook. And if you want to follow along, all you have to do is swipe right up here and you can go to the website where you can sign up to be on my email list, be entered into a giveaway drawing and get that ebook for free. So I'm doing this and then I'm going to upload this into IGTV and I'm going to click a link that you can actually take the person to the email list for sign up, right? Like how easy is that? So you don't have to have 10,000 subscribers to kind of work around that and those videos will stay in your IGTV library. So right? That is a pretty cool one. So one thing you can also do is just rip out, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, the, the best part of your video or just something that really entices someone to want to keep watching. So if you create this mini content, you know, like you see a lot on Instagram or on Facebook, you know, you can say, uh, you know, check out this video if you want to see the rest of this and learn all of my secrets or whatever it is. But you upload that video originally natively to Facebook and Instagram and all of the places, right? They're happy because they have native content. You are happy because there's also a link in the description that's going to take people to your actual video on YouTube or wherever else you're going to send them. So you need to strategically think about this as part of your content release strategy. And it, I swear, I know it, it sounds like a lot of extra work. Once you get in the habit of it, it's really not. It's, it's super simple. It just takes, you saw how long it took me to really post those thumbnails and like a quick blurb. It takes a few seconds. And if you don't have a few seconds after you've uploaded a video, we need to talk more about time management, which we can, we, we totally can. And then the last tip I have for you is you can always publish your own. If you have a blog, I would highly encourage you to write a blog post and then embed your own video inside of that blog post. Even if you're on an external website and you have an internal player that's going and playing the content of YouTube, YouTube will still count all of those views. Your SEO score is also going to increase because other people are finding you on places besides YouTube and you're already starting session times with YouTube, which is what they care about. They want to know, did you get someone to the platform? Did you get them to stay on the platform? Or are you the reason someone left the platform, right? So they're tracking all of that information. So if you have a blog someplace and you have, you know, ShellySaysTheDay.com blog post, and then I have my video inside of it, and then they decide they want to watch more videos, YouTube is fine with that. They're they're happy to give me the views and start a session time and you know promote these videos more. Plus, the more places that your name is showing up or your videos are showing up online, the greater your chances of ranking and showing up online are as well for your video. And the last thing I'm gonna say is there are a lot of Facebook groups that you can drop links and actually um, publicize your videos. Make sure not to do it in a spammy way. Make sure you have like a little bit of a who would benefit from this video. Don't just drop a link, but actually upload the thumbnail, have the link in the description or as the first comment. And then, you know, just make sure that it's not done in a super spammy way because in some groups you'll get kicked out uh, very quickly. So don't do that. Don't be that person, but definitely use Facebook groups of like-minded individuals or topics. So if you know that you do a lot of video editing tutorials, maybe do it in a video editing tutorial Facebook group. That would make sense. If you're in a cook cooking Facebook group or a car mechanic Facebook group, that doesn't make as much sense because those aren't your people. Maybe some of them will watch, but really what you want is targeted niche audiences because those are the people who actually get to know you, like you, trust you, maybe even eventually buy something from you. 
this is important. So sometimes it's not just about the quantity of people that you're getting into, you know, your life, your circle, your views, but actually the quality of the people as well. So I hope all of this made sense for you. If you have questions on anything I didn't cover during this time and you want me to go over it, make sure you drop a link in the comment section so I am sure to do that. Other than that, I'm going to see you in the very, very next video, which is all about being social, making friends, which is horrible for those introverts like myself. But I'm going to show you how to socialize correctly. Is that even a thing? Yeah, it's totally a thing. And I know coming from an introvert, ISTJ, Myers-Briggs people out there, it's kind of ironic. And, and it's funny that an introvert is going to tell you about how to socialize, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to try my best. And then you can take the ball and run with it and go way farther than I can because yes, because reasons. But all right. So I hope you guys enjoy the next video that's coming up and you're enjoying the series so far. If you are, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to download the free ebook that I have for you, how to find success in the eyes of YouTube. I'm really hoping you guys are enjoying it. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye. Bunny ears? I don't, I don't get that one. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to film a video here. Okay. I forgive you. You're so cute. You're so cute. Okay. Bish.